Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do part two on our little train painting. And of course, if you're enjoying this and you want to see more like it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now, as you can see here, I've got just a few colors pre-mixed, a little blue, a little white, and black, and just in different amounts to get different colors. And I've got my detail round. Now, you'll see that this train is dry. I'm not pressing really hard on it because I'm not sure how dry it is. And I think that most of this is dry. I've got a couple of maybe couple of wet things up in there, but it's pretty good. It's been a week and the weather here is starting to warm up quite a bit. I'm sure that helps. Uh, how about down here? I didn't put a lot of paint down here, so we should be okay. So, you know, some of these areas, maybe some of the whites up here are probably still wet. Let me check this mountain actually. Oh, the mountain's dry. Cool. All right. So one week seemed to, seemed to have done it, but you know what? I, I was very careful not to put on too much paint, so that helped too. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to Honestly, let's just highlight out our train. Let's detail our train. I want to spend most of our time this week doing that. That's why we kind of rushed through the landscape last time. Well, not so much rushed, but you know, we, we were very careful to get it done. It's because of this, because <laughs> I want to paint a train. There. Look, I have a little bit of clear gel here, which I may throw in to the paint as we go. Probably want to do that. Get some of these angles nice and straight. Obviously, I'll step back every few minutes to take a good look at it. For now, I'm just going to place on this highlight. And you notice what color I'm using? Yes, I am using blue and white for the most part to highlight to, uh, something that's black. And I can get away with that, and it works out pretty well because it's reflecting the colors in the sky. All right, let's get a little more blue into that. Give it even more the feeling of the colors of the sky. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Nice. Okay, keep going with this. On this side, let's... Uh, remember, this is black, so I don't want to go crazy. Maybe just touch on a dot here and there. This is just the initial highlight. This isn't the final highlight of, at all. Just going to start playing around with light. Get a little bit of white out here. There, nice. Maybe on this car here, we want to get some light, maybe some blue even. On this car here. There. Maybe make it go back a little. Good. Okay, let me show you what I'm going to do. And then after I kind of show you how to do it, I'm going to just keep doing it on my own because it's going to take a while. But I'm going to take some black here. And I'm going to move the black into the blue here, actually. Better, better go under it, wipe my brush, and then blend the two so I don't eat them all up. Otherwise, I think that color would just go away. I'm looking at my hand, I don't seem to be picking up anything, so this is good. And I'm going to create a rounded effect with highlight and shadow. That's how you create that effect. It's literally all there is to it. Now I'm going to load up with my nice light gray color. Same brush. So we're going to come right up here. And I think I'm going to start working on this little light. And you know, it's really round. And sometimes when you paint round objects, the perspective gets a little weird. And I had that trouble here. I had to spend an extra minute trying to sort out the perspective. So I'm going to be a little bit careful. And although I've got my lines in there from last time, you know, I've got the basic outline and the underpainting in, I may not follow it exactly. I may end up changing bits and pieces here, here and there because then, you know, it's sometimes difficult to get the perspective perfect the first try. And this light is something that I think needs a lot of help, so we're going to help it. <laughs> there you go. And you can help it when we're closer to done by cutting in the background. I don't want to do it now, though. Nice. Good. Okay, that's good. <laughs> there. Sorry if I'm a little quiet this time because you just got to concentrate when you're doing stuff like this. 
So hopefully you'll still be able to, to watch it and enjoy it. There. We're going to do smoke in just a second. I know it was a, a question I got a lot on the last video was, well, where's the smoke? Well, <laughs> just haven't got there yet. So we'll, we'll get there today. No worries. I didn't forget. This is the soot on the little smokestack thing. And I'm going to go to my gray. And I'm going to put a little highlight here. Keeping it as straight as possible. Good. And then we'll make it 3D by adding a little more highlight and shading. Now I went ahead and just mixed up a little bit of a lighter color over here on the side. And that's because I'm going to go ahead and just add in some details now. So here we go. I'm going to just got to start somewhere. So let me start here with a big one right here. I'm going to touch. And then I'm going to pull down. There. Nice. So I'm just going to create a bunch of these lines. And on this side as well, I need a line. There. We're going to need to put some shading on that one. Not so much on the other one, but on this one. There. A little quieter. I don't, want to get a, I don't want to get too much light on that side. I'm more focused on this side. All right. So now I'm going to, let's, I'm going to do something. We may regret this, but here's dark on one side. Flip it over a light on the other. Hey, it works for rocks. I don't see why it wouldn't work for train parts too. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Maybe right here. Oh yeah, look at that. Hey, it actually worked. Huh, not bad. We may have learned something. We both may have learned something. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and actually, you know what? I'm gonna get my brown now and I'm gonna load this brown up. Let me find a little white. Okay, so there's brown and white. A little black maybe, but mostly brown and white. Okay, and then this we can use for little rivet joints here. We can start to get a little, a little more color into our train, which would be, a, I think, a very positive thing. There. You don't have to do it all perfectly, just sort of do your best here. Oops, that's not. You gotta roll your brush to bring it to a point. It's a wonderful brush. This is the detail round. It's a good, good brush for this sort of thing. Next, I'm going to mix up a, a very quick bell color. And this is just a little like yellow, touch of red, and some of our mud over here, which we were using in the train. It's become a little bit muddy now, so I just threw it in the bell to kind of counteract some of the brightness. All right, ready for this? <laughs> there we go. I've got to make sure you roll your brush to a nice fine point. I'm going to come right here, slice right under the tiny, I guess the little thing that holds the bell, whatever that's called. And then you come down. And then you flare out and then you come back. It's a nice detail. It's well worth doing. Beautiful and fun. I mean, that's just cool. That looks good. To, I just think, <laughs> I think that looks nice. I do want to slice in maybe a little dark under here. Just to help with the contrast a bit. There. Okay. Now let's go ahead and mix up a little bit of yellow and white and see what that gives us. Okay, roll my brush. And then that. Hey, that's not bad. <laughs> this is fun. This is all new to me. As I mentioned last time, I've never done a train before. So every bit of this is new. Now I've got three colors mixed up here, kind of a gray and then a brown and then a little bit of a lighter gray. And we're going to go ahead and do the smoke. And I'm very, I think it's very important to tell you here that I'm using a detail round that's old. Do not do this with a new one. If you don't have an old one, use a filbert brush instead, but don't do this with a, with a nice new brush. I would hate to see you ruin it. It would be bad because it's synthetic fibers and the synthetic fibers, although this one is fairly tough for a, a little detail round style brush, but it can still be worn out if you scrub with it too much. So this is a very old one. <laughs> there you go. That's why you keep your brushes. You shouldn't throw them away. 
All right, so now this is dry. Remember, totally dry. Got nothing on my fingers, so that's good. Now, I've been noticing that for the, there's a lot of color in, these, in the smoke, and for the most part, it's opaque in the middle and very transparent on the edges, and that's what we're gonna do. Now, the steam, don't get this confused with the steam that comes out sometimes around the wheels and on this little thingy up here, that's transparent. This is smoke, and it's not quite as transparent. There, okay. And I'm rolling it in circles. Really, it's amazing the amount of smoke that, that you have to paint. There's a lot of it in here. So there, it kind of goes up and out across the landscape. Now, that's good, but let's, let's add a little clear gel to the mix. This will help to make it transparent. And I'll add a little white, a little more clear gel, and a little more white, and then I'll wipe it off. And we're gonna highlight now. Oops, let's see, that's not even transparent enough. Of course, this is dry, so we have a lot of freedom. It, we could do this wet, and I was going to, if, you know, if I was gonna get the, the train done, because remember last week, I wasn't even sure what I wanted to do with this painting. But we could have done this. It just would have been a slightly different strategy, maybe a little more challenging, but I don't think so. We would have used the blender brush quite a bit. Make sure that, yeah, let's make that break the mountain up there. See that? That can be nice and transparent. Maybe you want it even more transparent. I think we probably do. Take your paper towel, especially along the bottom edge, wipe it, and look, you get completely transparent smoke on the top. Same, same thing. See, it's dry, so you can wipe it without ruining your landscape. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> that's so cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just drop on extra highlight here to these rocks. I'm gonna go ahead and do it with the detail round, the worn out one. And I did these rocks very quickly because I knew that I was gonna, but this time of the painting, I knew I was gonna stop and, and pick it up a different day. So this is all dry. Although I'm not sure I wouldn't go scratching on it because the paint underneath might still be wet, but as long as we're soft and we don't break through the, the dry crust, we shouldn't have any trouble. Of course, even if we do, it's fine. I mean, that's what we're used to anyways. But I'm gonna just drop on a little bit of bonus highlight as, as you kind of can imagine the light coming through the painting. Here, a little more bonus light right there. Good, but don't, you know, don't go with colors that are different. Just because we're painting on another day, you've got to remember what colors you were using originally. Otherwise, it'll look really weird. <laughs> That's one of the things about having to come back. You gotta remember where you were. Now, for the most part, this is dry, although I did darken this section right here a little bit. So let's go ahead and just, let's use our grass technique one more time to brighten up the foreground a little. I didn't know how far I would want, want to take it, you know, because the train wasn't done. It was very difficult to, to know where to stop. So I stopped short of finishing. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish it out. We're just going to texturize this foreground a bit with some grass. Over here we can kind of slide. Some of this is wet and some of it's not. Added just basically this to the background as well. Kind of do some different things and then just just touch. See how that's texturizing the foreground a little better? We can also grab our you know our darks and do this with the darks but right down here these rocks we put a little highlight on them, but that's way too bright. <laughs> Don't want to do anything quite that bright. All right, let's do a little more. Yeah, there we go. A little more subtle grass. Now, lastly, we're going to go ahead and just add in some grass here in the foreground. And you'll see that painting grass over a dry area, because this is essentially dry, not totally, but very close, it's a little different. You see, it kind of get a slightly scratchier effect. and I. I think it's fine, I'm not worried about it. The reason I get the scratchy effect is because there's a lot of texture in this canvas that's actually dried in there. Now, you know, not a lot, like, like you might think of with a knife painting, but there's some, you know, from the brushwork. And, and it's just, it's there, it's locked in. So unless you're gonna go and sand this with a piece of sandpaper, which I am not gonna do, then you're gonna have slightly different textured grass than normal, and that's fine, I'm okay with that. Just gonna continue to roll my brush around to create these little grass areas. See, take a little dark, and go with the darks right over. You know how the grass works. <laughs> That's easy compared to the train. Oh, the grass is easy. <laughs> there we go. Of course, up on the train, I did do a little extra steam coming out of that valve, and I put a little coal in the car because I 
realized that, well, we probably need some coal in our coal car so the train can actually be powered. So there you go. I'm gonna go with smaller grass textures now as we go back into the distance. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.